Here's a pretty basic question, Craig. Uh, where do diseases, human diseases, come from anyway? Well, I think, you know, we have kind of a proprietary sense about us that, they're, that the, these diseases are all about us. But they actually come from animals, animals that we associate with, uh, animals that uh, are around us in the environment, and uh, we're just another host for that uh, animal disease. But don't some of these become human diseases as, they, as time passes? Well, that's right. As once they get in the human population, uh, organisms, particularly if we're at a certain uh, level of population, they can adapt and mutate and become exclusively a human disease. We see this all the time uh, with diseases. You know, the common cold now is pretty much relegated to, to humans, uh, a lot of these diseases. But the critical thing is we have to have a large enough human yeah, population yeah. to sustain them. Yeah, so urbanization, how does that, uh, why does that happen? I mean, it seems obvious, but explain that a little bit better Well, I think two factors really drive uh, the advent of, of animal diseases into humans. One is our constant contact with the animals. The more we're in contact with the animals and their disease-causing agents, the greater the likelihood they'll make the move into the human population. We also have to have a large enough population to sustain them. These diseases uh, have to have a reservoir, a place to hang out when they're not causing the disease. And uh, if the human population's too small, uh, they can't sustain themselves. That's why you see a lot of these diseases begin to occur in the human population as we get into uh, agriculture in our history and urbanization. So domesticated animals, where we have a, a societies beginning to do that, you see the incidence of disease in the human Oh yeah, disease. many many of our common diseases like measles and uh, even influenza are a result of us constantly being around domesticated animals. These domesticated animals can either give us their own diseases like rinder pests that eventually became measles or they can act as conduits to allow animal diseases in wild animals into the human population. So. You know, it's fascinating when you said we tend to think of these as our problem, but for the microbe... The, mi the microbe's only looking for a place to, uh, a nice yeah. warm yeah. place with plenty of food. And, you know, frankly, uh, we don't look all that different from a pig to an influenza virus <laughs> there. They're happy to replicate in the lung cells of a pig, a bird, or a human. Okay, so how do new diseases emerge? Well, I think you're seeing the classic example of that right now with uh, Ebola and, uh, and even the chikungunya virus, but Ebola is a classic example. Here we have a virus that we think is carried in fruit bats that can infect other animals and is slowly developing or mutating to become a human pathogen. You know, 24 or 25 times in the last 30 years we've had outbreaks of Ebola and it's never sustained itself in the human population, but here in uh, 2014, we finally mutated, got into a human population, and now it's sustaining itself. So they're not it really new. Recent molecular evidence indicates that Ebola has probably been around for uh, millions of years, and it's just finally got around to looking for a new host, us. So we hear these words like outbreak, and that means what? That it means that it's moved into, into our population. Yeah, we've got an outbreak. It's, uh, the, the disease agent has moved into humans and is trying to establish itself as a pathogen in this new host. So this has probably happened thousands of times in the course of human history with very little success. But when these organisms are successful, like the bacteria that causes bubonic plague, horrendous consequences are the result.